Well, it's a pleasure for me to be here uh, because of the and, and talk a little bit about the president's uh, national innovation strategy, which he released in, in <laughs> September, and talk about uh, the relevance of that strategy uh, to the mobile and wireless ecosystem that Jonathan talked about. Um, and as exciting as the trends that uh, Jonathan mentioned in terms of the explosive growth and the huge diversity of, of applications, I still think that we're uh, in the uh, adolescence of uh, the mobile and, and wireless uh, revolution and that uh, mobile technology is obviously going to both benefit from and drive broader advances in information and communications technologies, whether it's cloud computing or continued advances in speech technology uh, or low power electronics so that we're not having to constantly recharge our mobile devices or it advances in uh, nanotechnology that are going on in the laboratory right now that could allow us to store the equivalent of the Library of Congress in a device the size of a sugar cube or uh, the new applications that are beginning to emerge in the area of augmented reality. Um, and companies and entrepreneurs and people from the research community are going to be able to take and combine all these new technologies in ways that we can only imagine. So, as you know, uh, job number one for President Obama uh, when he came in was to uh, stop the economic freefall, and certainly we're seeing uh, some uh, early signs of good news in terms of GDP growth. But the next job is obviously to establish the foundation for long-term economic growth and uh, productivity and broadly shared prosperity. And in late September, he released a national innovation strategy in his speech that he gave in upstate New York in which he talked about the importance of three broad areas. Uh, the first is the importance of the government making investments in the building blocks of long-term economic growth and job creation, uh, research, human capital, and 21st century infrastructure. The second is the need for the government to create the right policy environment that will encourage productive entrepreneurship and private sector investment. And the third is uh, the, the role that we can all play in harnessing advances in science and technology to help meet uh, some of the pressing challenges that we face, whether it's allowing Americans to live longer, healthier lives, or making government more open and transparent and efficient, or accelerating the transition to a low carbon economy that creates green jobs in the United States and reduces our dependence on foreign oil. And I think that uh, the mobile sector um, is really going to benefit uh, from uh, and contribute to a lot of these goals. So with respect to the investment agenda, uh, clearly the, the mobile sector is not going to grow in the long term unless we have a world-class uh, workforce with strong uh, skills in the area of science, technology, engineering, and math. So the president has really put STEM uh, at the forefront of his K-12 through education reform efforts. Uh, he is providing those governors that put STEM at the center of their education reform efforts uh, an additional competitive preference uh, for the $4 billion Race to the Top Fund. He's been working with companies and foundations uh, and nonprofit organizations to try to get more young boys and girls interested in math and science. He has made a commitment to uh, tripling the number of NSF graduate research fellowships as a way of getting, again, more students' interest in these subjects. Um, and he has committed to uh, doubling the research budgets of key science in agencies such as the National Science Foundation, the Department of Energy's Office of Science, and the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Um, we, uh, we just passed the, uh, the 40th anniversary of the ARPANET, which led to today's internet. Uh, so it drives home the importance of make the government making long-term investments <coughs> that are beyond the time horizon uh, of individual companies that will create uh, the future platforms for, for economic growth. Um, the wireless industry has been the uh, beneficiary of uh, government-sponsored research, particularly at our uh, nation's leading research universities. 
Uh, it was investments by DOD and NASA, for example, uh, that led to the uh, Viterbi algorithm, uh, which, as you all know, is really at the heart of uh, CDMA, uh, GSM, digital cellular satellite, uh, Wi-Fi, and speech recognition technology. Um, Andrew Viterbi and uh, Erwin Jacobs were the uh, went on to become the uh, the co-founders of Qualcomm, uh, and today uh, DARPA is investing in dynamic spectrum access technology that they're investing in because it will allow the military to operate in different countries that have competing civilian uh, and government users, uh, but it could also lead to uh, new approaches more broadly for for sharing spectrum and hopefully making. Uh, more spectrum available. So that's the first thing that we're doing is the government is investing in the building blocks uh, of uh, economic growth and job creation, particularly around research, human capital, and 21st century infrastructure. The second major element of the president's strategy is to create the right policy environment for private sector inv uh, innovation, whether that is um, his pledge to make the research and experimentation tax credit permanent, which is in his budget, um, efforts to review uh, export controls uh, to in increase U.S. exports, uh, an effort that's being led by the National Economic Council and the National Security Council, uh, efforts at the Commerce Department uh, Patent and Trademark Office to reduce the patent backlog uh, and improve the quality of patents and a number of steps uh, that the FCC is taking that 